Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back, Chris Neal with Real Science with Chris Neal with another Geek Out session. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the supplements out there, one of the oldest supplements, well, not quite the oldest, but it's been around a long time, creatine. Creatine's been around a long, long time. It's been tested over and over and over again in multiple studies, and it works. It really does work overall. It's not perfect, but we're gonna dig into the real science behind how it works. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so welcome to Real Science with Chris Neal. Thank you for your support. If you like some of my content, like and subscribe and hit me up with any questions or comments that you have. I'm also available at vikingalternative.com, which is the medical clinic that, uh, that helps to optimize you as a human being. It's, it's awesome. We, we get very excited about that, that sort of stuff. So creatine, here we go. We're going to jump right into it. Creatine is all about this energy, 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 energy. And that's basically what it does. It's a pretty simple molecule. Here's the drawing of the molecule right here. Pretty simple in its, um, in its action also. Creatine has to get into your muscles. So what's interesting about creatine is that creatine is actually something that's natural in your body. We already have creatine. We don't have to buy it from GNC or from wherever. So um, creatine is actually found in our diet, usually uh, more consistently in meats and fish and things like that. Um, so just in, in a pretty standard protein-based diet, you can pull about two grams of creatine you know, from the meat and fish that we eat. So it's, it's utilized for, for energy purposes on a regular basis, and it's really nice to have. So once we understand how it works, then we can understand how we can use it to supplement and make us uh, better, really improve that performance in the way of energy. So energy is obviously necessary for so many things that we do. But how does this energy work? Well, in order to answer that question, this is when we have to dig down deep into our geek out session as to you know what how your body even forms energy in the first place. So we gotta really trail back to that middle school, high school science class where everybody was falling asleep. Um, I wasn't, but because I'm a geek and I love this stuff. But um, but do you guys remember the Krebs cycle? The Krebs cycle here. Um, Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle, the um, glycolysis, the electron transport chain, all of that fun stuff. Um, but this is what it's all about. This is how our body creates all of this energy. So we take in food, glucose, fatty acids, amino acids can go through this process towards the citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle. Okay, this is the part of energy. You know that when we breathe in, we need oxygen in order to create energy. We breathe out carbon dioxide. There's the carbon dioxide right here that we breathe out as a waste product. So this is the this is the whole the whole purpose of this process is to create ATP, 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 tons of ATP. That's our energy source inside the mitochondria, which is inside the muscle cell. It actually happens in all of our cells, but but primarily what we're talking about is muscle. So we gotta have that ATP there. Without ATP, we really we're not getting much energy at all. Um, so <clears throat> So now, once, once we do have ATP, ATP by itself is not necessarily energy. What ATP is, it's potential energy in the form of a bond. These are three phosphates, adenosine triphosphate. This is adenosine or, or the, uh, uh, the adenosine ribose. Um, so adenosine triphosphate, that's three phosphates right here. So when you break that third phosphate bond, boom, huge amount of energy comes out of that huge amount of energy. If you break the second bond, eh, not so much. But the third, if you, if you break that first bond right there, a lot of energy comes out of that. So what happens, what happens after you break that bond? You've got a phosphate running around, and then you have this ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, you know, which is, you know, not as cool. So, um, so we can actually, there are two different ways that, or there's a couple different ways, but you know, there, there's two different ways that you can recreate that bond back again so you can get that explosion of energy another, another, for another round. So that's what creatine does. Creatine picks up that phosphate and, and attaches it back on again so you can go through another round and get that big explosion of energy. And that's what it's all about. If you have enough creatine already there, ready to, ready to grab that, that phosphate that gets, that gets uh, broken off, then it's ready to go. So that's, that just lets us know that the way creatine works, you got to have it already there ready to go. So this, this teaches us a lot about how we're supposed to use the supplements that we have. So um, that's, that's where it gets very, very interesting. But that's basically the background towards it. 
So one of the things that's really important, just as a side note, the um, when it comes to getting that extra energy here in the natural system, what's really important are these things right here. Glucose, fatty acids, amino acids. Th these are the, the raw materials that are used for this whole process. If we can't really get this whole process down very well, then we're not going to be making a whole lot of energy and we're not going to be getting that big boom. We're not going to be getting that uh, in, our, in our workouts, our overall performance. So everything has to fit. It doesn't matter how much creatine you have on the back end. If you're not getting in enough nutrients, then what's the point? It doesn't matter. You know? so, so you have to be careful and understand how the whole process works from beginning to end and all the nuts and bolts of things before you get into supplementation. Because there's no point in taking all kinds of creatine if you're on some kind of crazy withholding you know, deficit and you're, you're not getting even enough of the basic materials to create ATP really in the first place. You know, so all the nuts and bolts have to fit. Another side note, side note, is that it's also hugely important to check your hormones. Very, very important. Your hormones basically set the mood that your entire body is in. So if your body is not in the mood to even be energetic in the first place, to recover for strength, for energy, for drive, motivation, like for muscle development, for burning fat, then what does all of this matter? It, it, it just doesn't matter. You know, so, so that's something that's so important to do from the very beginning is to, is to get your hormones checked. Oh my gosh, get your hormones checked and make sure that you are set up and you're optimized from the get-go. And then all of these other, all of these other nuts and bolts will fall into place, you know, the way they're supposed to. So that's basically the way creatine works. Now, when you go to the store and you go to the creatine section, you know, they're going to have all different types. And so I just listed four of them here. You know, and it's, it's confusing. It's like, what the heck? Which one do I get? The one that is the most tried and true, it's been around the longest, is what's called monohydrate. Okay? Now, we already know that we have to have creatine already, already there waiting and ready before the boom happens. You know, we want, we want creatine to be ready to pick up that extra phosphate. So we know that, that creatine is not something that you, that's like a pre-workout that you just take, you know, just when you need it. And it, it has to be... It, in many cases, creatine has to be what we call loaded. It needs to be, it needs to be consistently running in your system. Okay, so um, so that's so so it, it teaches us how we're supposed to supplement with it. So monohydrate being the oldest and, and most tried and true form, a lot of people will do like a loading phase. Well, basically they'll take five grams or even up to ten grams per day of of this creatine. It comes in a powder form, you know, and you, you can, it's, it's pretty thick and chunky, doesn't really mix very well. Even microscopically, they found that, that the, the, the components of your creatine monohydrate, it, it doesn't, it, it sticks and it clumps together microscopically too. So because of that, there's been problems with the absorption, the absorption of these molecules into your system, into the muscles, and it's, it's, it has kind of a low absorption rate. That's why they came up with them micronized so microscopically they kind of broke down those little things and and they and they attached attached pieces to it so that it can't clump up as much and it dissolves better and it absorbs better so that's why i this is what i use i use micronized and and i like it you know it's it's working really well you know and i haven't had any issues with it but um but the science behind micronized is, is pretty simple now these other types and there's many many i just listed a few but there's there's many types basically the creatine ethyl ester, the crealkaline, you know, there's a creatine citric acid version, you know, they're basically what they do, they attach different pieces to this molecule here to hopefully encourage it to, to, um, to absorb and get sucked into the muscle, you know, better and better, you know, it's whether one is better than the other, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of tough, but I will say just in general, there have been studies that show that there are um, uh, roughly, you know, 15 to 20 percent of people are just non-responders to it. It just doesn't doesn't really work well, whether it's an absorption issue or um, whether it's, you know, something that's just happening in the muscle where the muscle just does not respond to exogenous creatine. It's hard to tell. But, you know, if you are in that in that situation when you're in, where you're in the 80 to 85 percent, the majority of people, you know, it it can be a really a really good kick of, of energy, you know, that's that's real good for you. So it's also very safe that your body naturally recognizes, you know, which is also a big plus. 
So side effects, you know, some of these side effects, the monohydrate is the one that is listed as having the most side effects. Most of the side effects that come from mono, monohydrate, I believe are due scientifically because it has such a low absorption rate. So if things are not absorbing into the muscles, they're just kind of basically just floating around, you know? So the, the creatine as a molecule itself, it draws water to it, okay? So one of the things you'll hear about creatine, people will say this just generally about creatine, which isn't quite true, but um, that, that creatine will make you hold water, you know? So um, if your creatine is not absorbing well, then yes, that can happen. You know, it doesn't always happen, but that can happen. Um, now, once creatine is into the muscles, you know, then then it's you know like it's a very small molecule, so um, it it does require water in order to for it to do its job, you know. So that is a that is a part of it. But as far as you know, um, you know, looking swollen or bloated or whatever, those are those are side effects of your of your creatine not being absorbed well, not necessarily just generally for creatine altogether. So, bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain. You know, those are those are things that, that can be side effects. Not everybody gets them, but they are out there. You know, more likely in the one that, that's absorbed the least amount. So be on the lookout for that. But otherwise, this is creatine. I like creatine. It's very safe. It's easily accessible. You you can usually just mix it up with your with uh, with a protein shake or you know take it every day. You know, usually uh, anywhere from two to five mil five excuse me grams, two to five grams of um, creatine per day does the trick. And, um, and then here you go, here's some good information on a, um, on a, on a supplement that, that can hopefully help you out with your performance. Thanks a lot guys. Please like and subscribe, hit me up anytime. Check me out on vikingalternative.com and I hope this helps. Hey, stay healthy.